A bird's eye view of part of a Choli land. Thousands of hectares of land awash with lush green vegetation. A vivid indication of rich, fertile soils supported by pleasant climate. Excellent conditions favorable for agriculture. For close to two decades, a Choli land was devastated by war. A senseless war that claimed thousands of lives. A war that displaced close to two million people, forcing them to live in crowded makeshift settlements, commonly known as the Internally Displaced Persons Camps, IDPCs. Today, the people of Acholiland are beginning to experience relative peace as the sound of guns fall silent. It's time to get back to their land, put the dark past behind them and embark on reconstruction as well as put into use this fertile land for agriculture, the mainstay of the Acholi people. Pader District, one of the Acholi land districts to the east of the region. Covering 8,282 square kilometers, Pader neighbors the districts of Lira, Apache, Katakui, and Kotido. Its current population stands at 353,663 people. The population of Pader district during the war was 298,527. It acquired district status in the year 2000. Agriculture is the major economic activity. It is early hours of the morning and 45-year-old Olot Joseph is on a groundbreaking task of three acres of his 13-acre piece of land, preparing it for planting cotton and sunflower. Olot lives in La Bororiemo village, Patongo, sub-county, Pader district. He returned here with his family after living in Patongo IDP for six years of squalor and desperation. On returning, Olwatch did not find any difficulty in resettling on his land. He has been able to set up a homestead to accommodate his relatively large family of 14, inclusive of two wives and five orphans. 
Eto gero kuno bicara buruk ya ni, way kam. Karena dong way dah mian rugo dong pajo. Ini anda cakap beri wati. Ane anak iya lah iya lah, mungkin mayam macam ane dong pe. Kebe nak kiki pamer nama duang nyoloti nama duang. Kemo zai be dong tiwol, megu be dong tiwol, cam be dong tiramu dah nama be. Sebab ane anak karmi dugo. Kebe nak pajo kaya nak no dong yamu kor nama be. Kaca tuo ngoh iya lah. Kaya nak neno pajo dong be yamu tiga kor nama be. Kaca api aku gua no, rong beru kiri cak biar hari oke kan dua biru nak kau weng. Eh rokai ni mana kada ke? Nak ni yo isi ane, ati ke gua no, marang biar orang weng. Gino mama dia temu ne pergi. Mr and Mrs Ongom are supervising laborers on one of their pieces of land planted with ground nuts. The couple own 2,000 acres of land in Misiri village, Patongo sub county, Padere district. They had to flee this area in 2002 following frequent rebel attacks. They left their home deserted. The family took refuge in Patongo camp where Mrs. Ongom was met the camp commandant. Just like many other camps, life was not easy in Patongo IDP camp. At the onset of peace, people wanted to get back. The Ongoms returned here in 2008 and embarked on resettling and utilizing their land. Today, they have planted numerous crops ranging from maize, groundnuts, and cassava. Polmire padano karma geno winyuni konyi dong pere dano tamone konyi dong pere me berikam kadeno chan to magene bini pura pura pen yo man mano dano geriye me gamo chame uno piti ka yo mo chun dano pen karcha pachuri no pe ye mano chi wer dano final geno tamone pe wa dok ka furungo ka furungo amwa na kacha ane wuni geno wano watiki luanya rio luanya pa karmo jong ke luanya pa konyi. Karma konjong pe gomet atau timu be blocking karma jangan kan, wajar dah orang di timu mereka yorukom ini orang kita ganti apa fokus. Olanya Bosco lives in Wanglobo village, a kilometer away from Opota trading center. Opota is remembered for the unfortunate 2002 brutal incident where Konya rebels killed 28 people in cold blood and boiled their body parts in pots. Olanya lost his wife together with four other relatives during that incident. Following the incident, the family took refuge in Patongo camp where they stayed for six years. Gina wanu pura ya miru wacara, kau wacara, ene miru konyo, yo mau macam tu, macam tu lakukan, wilo bon, kiki acara mukanya ni macam lagu mana pun pura. In spite of the unfortunate incident, the family came back to their land in 2008. Olanya lives here with his new wife and six children. This morning, Olanya and his wife are working on their groundnuts garden located on the land he acquired in 1996, a kilometer away from their home. Yeah, <laughs> 
apuro ki kam mwaka acel mwaka me aryo ni ndo tiye ni mada dok gang ka kor chwe ma be cho chek chi kar mo kene arong nongo ne gwa ke pul ma rong mo guti a aboro ki ngom me ni guti aboro ni eni ye dong a beru ka konye kere ka ker ma chamo guti a ryo cha chamo guti a ryo ko no a bisiel mo dong ni a char ra ngwen no ko a char a ryo mo ko dok e chi no a ngwen mo dong ni dong me ti no dong kori Emmanuel Julius Peter Okot is in the final stages of completing one of the huts in his homestead. With assistance from his son Jimmy Okello, Okot is only able to secure time for such an activity in the later part of the afternoon. As an LC3 councillor of Omot Sub County, he spends a bigger part of the day handling local civic matters. Okot and his family of 10 live in Aquili village. in Omot Sub County Padere district Following frequent rebel attacks in the area in 2002 the family abandoned their home and headed to Patongo IDP camp where they stayed for one year before they shifted to Omot IDP camp until 2006 In total the family spent 5 years in the camps Ah ya e pa yo kan kedi tin na duju mo ji kam paton mo tur mi ari ari Abel kunu mo rachel mo ma ari yo mele ate du ko e kam mo ana mo ye paton pien abel ti ta gamen ta tie eria kan sila el sia de kam ti o mot don pa rang mo ye dis pe ko kan e nu ti el wa nu ti kan a ya e kam paton en in de bichel me du ma par yo mo tur mi ari yo de kan ye anda du ko abel e kam mot kan mi o da du kam mot kan no government me yu kan no do ke lo moñ yu mot sub county first battalion en ye one shot ticket gi me luong luak me do ke ni yu mot ko me ana ngwe de be kam ar yo pa 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 to ke do mot ka en ko me no tek dang pe be pe ka me mir yini nuong ke kanal la we ki ke ru de me ramo u tinu ni ke nyu jo ayi ti ke nu dan petie amen nu ni ora ciel to to ri jo de ngwe na bije bichel man pe ma ciel pe ma na mario be di lwa kara ciel ke lu ke mi to apol ki ndwa pe ma na ma de pe ma ke nu ti ara ge cha ma mi ro rom jo petie in 2006 a court took a decision to return to his home. He embarked on constructing houses for the family. A court is one of the beneficiaries of the ongoing government resettlement program that encourages people to build permanent houses. Ah, kitumi ana gedo kede kae ni ubedo program ma government. Me ko eno ukelo plan. I this week this week take a plan here in sub county. So in sub county Omi odong tie e villages plani yini nu funni te chwe yu ot alo bakere plan na menu government okelo kun plan na gamen ni chatie ni yu bo ta me ramo bari pierre de a pierre yo no me komot a bichel binu be me jokon a eka a di angwen angwen e te be me 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 toilet The Court family has a huge chunk of land totaling up to 150 acres. This season, they have opened up 12 acres of this land in preparation for planting cassava. And in subcounty, a teaching lead farmers, me pe tomogo. Me pornien, uh, a pe tomogo ye ke ken du juweng. Pasquello Eloa is a court neighbor. Eloa returned to his land 2 years ago after living in a camp for 5 years. Upon returning, Eloa took advantage of the availability of government's NADS program. He chose to concentrate on citrus farming while his wife took up millet growing on his 15 acres of land. 
ginuweko ana chako pitu mushungwa pian luak meka luak me sub county onen ni ana bedo apirien apore by na moame ntie line ni kokome yinogo kana me kar me abina ngwa chako uno ti line ame kar me ana ti kema rami kar sha ana mo ti mambui enta mana me ti pa jutura ni ati agonya adanga ati ya mo korra be apati ya me kam ya me kam rami ya me bui From a distance, it looks like a small village meeting, but it's not. It is members of Oyat Bosco Lutoka's family taking an afternoon rest under a shed provided by a tree in the homestead. They have just had their lunch and are husking ground nuts. Three years ago, this would have been a rare sight in this part of the district because the area was the rebels' access corridor through which they passed on their way from the Sudan to Uganda. Lutoka's family lives in Masai village, Kalagum Parish, Walsap County, Padere district. In 2002, the family was forced to abandon their home and head for Kalongo IDP camp, where they stayed for seven years. Lutoka has four wives and 39 children. Maintaining and taking control of such a big family in a camp proved a nightmare for him. The children had acquired rogue habits. In 2009, Lutoka took a bold decision to move his family back to their land. But he did this piecemeal. Kitgum district, the largest district in the Choliland. Covering a total area of 9,651 square kilometers, it borders with the Sudan to the north, Kotido, Pade and Gulu districts. The current population of Kitgum district stands at 353,222 people. The population of Kitgum district during war stood at 282,375 people. The major economic activity is agriculture. Okete Kene MacDonald lives in Mudu West Village, Parachele Parish, Padwati Sub County, Kitgum District. It is midday and he's checking on his cattle. Two of his heifers have just given birth to two calves. In 1997, Okete Kene was forced to flee his home with his family together with his livestock because the area is located right in the route rebels used on their way from and back to the Sudan. The return of Okete Kene to his land was gradual. He derived inspiration from the first visit he made to this place after a staggering 11-year absence. Uh, 
In the last one year that the family has been here, Okete Kene has been able to rebuild his homestead with new houses and additional facilities. He pays special attention to domestic hygiene and has constructed all the necessary sanitary facilities. This afternoon, Oketekene is digging a pit that he intends to use as a rubbish bin. The element of family bond is very evident as people go through the resettlement process. Family members are increasingly getting together in groups and lending a hand to a brother to construct a house and finish it quickly. Although he is younger than most of his brothers, Sam Onge Kiseka takes the lead to mobilize his 20 brothers to build one another a house. <laughs> The family, which has just returned, is resettling over their 1,000-acre land in Paduat South Village, Ogili Sub-County, Kitgum District. In 1997, the entire family fled this area following a series of brutal attacks on defenseless civilians. They took refuge in Palabek Kal Kamp. The family returned in 2005 and resettled on their land. Ongi is now engaged in citrus farming. He has so far planted 17 orange trees. Citra, Tichara, and Asset, Nojim Marie, Dokimi Ario, Kodimagimi, and Kodnebe, Rimaria can, she know at least no Omalara Larong, Walkwana. As people in northern Uganda take up individual initiative to get back to their homes, the need to extend services to them is of great importance. This is Obien Health Center 2, located in Aputu Bear Village, Paibon Chua County in Kutgum District. Court Kenneth is the medical assistant in charge of this facility. This afternoon, he's treating Amoni Betty's child who has been diagnosed with malaria. Amoni lives in Aputu village, six miles from the center. Betty Amoni is lucky. She does not have to walk very far in order to get medical attention for her son. The center serves over 13 villages with a population of 7,000 people in the sub county. In 2008, following a growing number of people returning from camps, the center was rehabilitated and equipped to handle patients in the area. On average, the center receives 100 patients that come here with various ailments. <laughs> Katum Health Center 2 is located in Padibe sub-county, Kitgum district. The increased number of returnees in this area necessitated establishment of this health facility. Opened in November 2008, the center caters for a population of close to 3,500 people. It is manned by a medical assistant who handles common minor cases like malaria and hepatitis. 46-year-old Lukar Wilson is a resident of Katum West Village, a stone throw away from the center. He is a frequent hepatitis E patient at this center. Hepatitis E is a very common condition in this area. As a result, 
government has endeavoured to avail medication in health centres like this one, located in areas where safe drinking water is not readily available. Cases of malaria, guinea, hepatitis, gicatiagi, two 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 During the insurgency, many young people missed out on chances of accessing formal education. As people return to their villages, many of those young people are yearning for skills to enable them earn a living as they resettle in their communities. Obien Community College was set up in Obien, a to bear by the government to provide post-primary technical training for graduates of PLE who failed to get places in senior secondary schools. Although it was established during the insurgency time in 2002, Obien Community Polytechnic had to close soon after following an attack by the rebels of the LRA. The Polytechnic reopened in March 2007 after peace returned to the area. Today, many young people have enrolled for courses ranging from bricklaying, carpentry, tailoring and motor vehicle mechanics. Those who have graduated from here have proved to be very useful members of the community considering that many masons and builders are required in the ongoing reconstruction process. The students that we have from here are even helping these returnees in the construction, in making their buildings, constructing their houses as they are resettling. In Padwat village, Palabek sub-county, Kitgum district, Padwat primary school has had to be reopened after many years of closure. The returnees in the area with school-going children have grabbed the available opportunity to access primary education for their children. How are you? Children have been saved the burden of walking long distances in order to reach schools. The school has a population of close to 800 pupils, all from the locality. Amuru District, the newest district to be formed within the Acholi land. It covers a total area of 922.28 square kilometers. Formed in 2006, Amuru neighbors Nebi, Ajumani, Arua and Masindi to the south. Its current population stands at 214,300 people. At the height of the insurgency, a lot of people fled from here to areas of Masindi. Today, there are many returnees resettling on their land and embarking on agriculture activities to sustain themselves. For close to 20 years, the vast open savanna land to the east of the district, suitable for commercial farming, lay idle because of insecurity. Located in Lolim village, Latoro Parish, Porongo Sub County, Lolim Farm covers a total of 1,200 acres. In 2000, the farm owners had to partially abandon this farm because of rebel incursions in the area. They took refuge in the nearby Lolim camp. <laughs> Today, Openye and his brother Anua Richard, who jointly own the farm, have cleared 150 acres of the farm on which they are growing largely maize and rice. They have been able to procure heavy commercial farm machinery to ease their work. The peace prevailing in the area has given them confidence to comfortably settle and concentrate on their farm activities. 
They see no reason why people should remain in camps. Forty-six-year-old Obote John lives in Elegu village, Bibia Parish, Atiaksab County. He is planting sugarcane on part of the 2,000-acre family land. Obote is a member of the Pamoto family, a well-known large extended family in the area. Today he is able to cultivate here because the area now is very peaceful. In 2002, the entire family shifted from here and went to Bibia IDP camp approximately 18 kilometers away. The family came back in 2008 and resettled on their land. Whereas the rest of the family members got engaged in planting maize, Obote discovered a niche in sugarcane production that he hopes to exploit profitably. For him, discarded sugarcane remains, considered by many to be rubbish, is immensely valuable. Other members of the family have cleared another portion of their land on which they have planted maize. Made up of seven families, the Pamotos is an example of an extended family that took refuge in the camp, remained close together and returned as a group to resettle on their land which they found intact. A couple of kilometers away, another family is preparing for celebrations. The activities for the big family meal are in progress. It is also a thanksgiving ceremony for the family of Elinesto Guli. Believed to be in his late 80s, Mze Guli is sick and frail. The gathering includes clan elders, wives, sons and grandchildren. They are holding a thanksgiving prayer for their recovering father and also thanking God for peacefully resettling on their land which they had abandoned in 2005 for Bibia IDP camp. This is the first family reunion since they returned in August 2008. With assistance from his children, Mze Guli has been able to re-establish his homestead with well-built structures. The Thanksgiving prayer is followed by a sumptuous lunch things they were unable to do while in the IDP camp. Kunu Petime Chi Kunu Wati Winyonia Berry Camp Tech. We are women, men of Uganda. 
The need to provide education for the Elegu returning community is of paramount importance. This is Elegu Primary School, the only primary school in the area. For five years it was hosted at Bibia Primary School following displacement from here in 2003. In 2008, the school relocated to its original site after the area was declared peaceful. Today, the school is providing primary education from Form 1 to 6 for 320 children of Elegu village returnees. School and education piano kuch onodong tienenen. Pian lunyo and maka and begit vogo. Chidong tawani kerego do kilo tiangili. Town me a school don't mere do our kibia, piano tiano tikan, kid vog dong, wak yap school kan, and one drugo. School make konyalun. In Latek Odong village, Alero Sub County, Amuru, Alero Primary School today proudly displays high levels of neatness and vibrancy after 13 years in exile at Amuru Lamogi Primary School. The school's population of 801 pupils comes from the neighboring communities returning from camps. Under the government's free universal primary education, the school has received supplies in form of textbooks and other scholastic materials. Although the number of pupils enrolling here is overwhelming the teaching staff, it has not deterred the teachers from striving to ensure that quality education is imparted to these young people yearning for it. The driving force behind their enthusiasm seems to be their determination to catch up with the rest of the pupils in part of the country that have been peaceful. Northern Uganda has the highest HIV prevalence rate of infection compared with the rest of the country. One of the factors responsible for this state of affairs is the 20-year war, products of which are the IDP camps. Idleness and congestion in these camps are considered to be some of the catalysts to the spread of the virus. Today, many people living with HIV and AIDS are leaving the camps going back to their villages. For them, the need to access medication is of paramount importance in order to stay alive. Oh, 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 Karim. Done, 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 done. Opio Walter is a caregiver from Komboni Samaritans, an HIV AIDS focused organization operating in northern Uganda. This afternoon, he is on his routine visit to Ayego village, Chorom Parish in Kochgoma, Sub County, Amuru district. His first clients are 44 year old Achai Martin and his 43 year old wife, Anena Joy. They have both been HIV positive for the last nine years. Anena has been on antiretroviral drugs since 2007 when the family was still in Kochgoma camp. On leaving the camp in 2007, the Komboni Samaritans assured the couple of a continued supply of drugs and health care. Me 
At the time of its formation by the colonial government in 1913, Gulu was known as a Choli district encompassing Amuru, Pade and Kitgum as a single entity. Following its fragmentation, Gulu currently covers an area of 3,449.08 square kilometers. Currently, Gulu's population stands at 353,663 people. Its population at the time of the war stood at 298,527 people. Like in the other three sister districts in the Choliland, agriculture is the main economic activity in Gulu district. Forty-seven-year-old Onyango Simon is a bee farmer. He lives in Lalur village, Laboromor Parish, Palaro Sub County in Gulu district. He is on a routine inspection of his 250 beehives. Beekeeping has been Onyango's preoccupation for the last 20 years, having inherited it from his late father. Although he fled this area with his family in the early 90s to Laboromoro Center, he never completely abandoned his trade. Even at the peak of the insurgency, Onyango would get some opportunity to sneak here and harvest honey. He was able to earn and reinvest the proceeds. In 2007, after peace returned to this area, Onyango permanently moved back with his family. He has been able to resettle on his family's 3.5 square mile of land. There was no way Onyango was willing to exchange this valuable source of income and pride to continue staying in a squalid camp. Today, Onyango is ripping big from his honey business and has no regrets. Although the family homestead is located in a relatively remote place, Onyango has no fear of anything at all. He lives a comfortable life here with his 20 children and three wives. He has become the village model of a successful farmer and businessman. 
gentong tu wenka dugu pian kij ma na per kati yuneni kij ma anti ka kelani kwanya en kij ci timu ti wenka ngat man wenka an ka da dok gang abi timu ketang ngati ngat dok gang abi timu ketang ngati eh ci to nyaaw ni ci ada an kij ma per kati yuneni e yo yuek ma tek ni wo nyaaw bo lu kij kai tu mo ke lu koñ bor nyaaw ano chuma mano ramareo ano ki pire pire ma olo a rien me ne kwere ti e bere ki di e fu a we lo ki a ti ka yele kwere ki a ti ka chulo ti ofa oriang martin packs charcoal in bags as he prepares to transport them to gulu town approximately 30 kilometers away it is the only immediate recourse to earn money that will help him run his household maka ena wang ka chara charo ka chene mo kenne ki wele ge ge chama mo kenne mo kenne chere ilokon pan pa lutero oriang lives in a remote village in palaro with his family of eight. the family is just resettling on their 50 acre piece of land they had to abandon in 1997 due to the insecurity at the time it is 6 months since they got back after 12 years of living in alero idp camp ko ike mo berutek pian dano goro dano ma pari pari dak be kin ori weng tio ma chok chok ko pol tin ro bale gin ma yam tin pe ko nero A combination of factors, key among which were the discomfort in the camp and government's call on people to go back home, compelled him to return to his land. He is full of optimism that things will be better. Manda ti anu ko ma be. Ma ngini i inye mo ka ci el nyaari o e duguna eni. Angere ala ala ga we beru diet. Now ang uro ng cha bero ka cha buru Resettling on his land was very easy for Oryang. He only had to relocate his homestead, clear the area and put up structures. Pa yo ke lo ka dar ngom ma. A bero ge ma di ka lo weng. O cha ko tong lo bo, cha ko go lo bo. Go lo bo weng o cha ko chue cha. Jo mu do kam. Mia chiel ati ane ane ki ki ja ma konye pe ati ane ki ki ja de twan dong gi kam me ti dong on pur ka re ki ro la wu be ma pura a chiar be kem a be a ter ge jo ka ma wo jo ne kony pa be re kam konye pe re pe ngo pe do ko gang from a distance it looks like some work of an arsonist but it is not it is the demolition of palaro idp camp in progress vivid demonstration of people's determination to leave the camps the exercise is supported by usaid and danish refugee council established in 1997 palaro idp camp had accommodated a population of 11800 people people from as far as Owalo Parish, Olokomede Parish and Laboromoro Parish. People started leaving this camp to go back to their homes in 2008. During the demolition process, only houses for 330 people will remain because they are the original residents of this area. In most cases, people leaving the camps do not usually demolish their houses. As a result, these abandoned houses become dens of criminals from where they spring to terrorize local residents. Atisia menesi wan matie ngat maneno kit padano kat matika dokere gang ki uri mo dong magatika timeti mabo ki yak ki bur ki lutian tetek ki bur ki mon ot tetek eno miyo district ki sub country ku moko tam ne meko Omir ado you pay ni wang ma ori mai kem wang oket This is Palenga IDP camp in 2004 at the height of the insurgency
With a population of close to 10,000 people, Palenga ranked among the most congested camps in northern Uganda. Located 10 kilometers south of Gulu along Kampala Gulu Road, Palenga IDP camp was established in 1999 to shelter people from Lakwana, Koro, Ongako sub counties, and Paido, Palenga, and Paluo parishes. This is Palenga today. By February 2009, the population in this camp had drastically reduced tenfold to approximately 900 people only. This is clear testimony to the rate at which people are returning to their homes in this area. <laughs> Most of these remaining and demolished houses belong to the original residents of the area. Langol Camp, located about 30 kilometers northwest of Gulu Town. It was established in 2005 to shelter people from Alokolum Parish and the neighboring areas. In 2006, people started leaving this camp for their villages. Although a large number of people have left, others, for one reason or another, are still here. <laughs> For 76-year-old Mze Ochiti, this is his ancestral home. He cannot wait for the day when this place will be cleared of IDPs so that he can productively utilize his land. Nursing his frustrations, Ochiti lives here with his big family of 40, comprising children, his son's wives and grandchildren. As people settle back in their communities, they now feel free to revive their traditional practices, practices they missed when they were in the camps. It is just after 8 p.m. The Acholi traditional fire has been lit in the compound of 60-year-old Labot Cecilia, who lives in Achutamer village, Paibona Parish, a watch sub-county in Gulu. Gathered around the fireplace are her children, grandchildren and some children from the neighborhood. This is a common traditional practice in a Choli culture where young people, after supper, gather and listen to elders' advice as well as listen to folklore. <laughs> Like many people who had taken refuge in camps, Labot was not able to perform this practice in the entire 10 years she spent there. <laughs> I look at me, 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 look at me
Tiu yang nuti yang kita mana dong pepoinya. Religious ceremonies are an important aspect in the religious-oriented society of the Acholi people. For people who cherish their Christian faith, fulfilling the church's obligation is a sacred requirement that must be attained in their lifetime. This is a combination of a mass wedding and confirmation at St. Joseph, the Workers' Catholic Church in Minakulu, approximately 20 kilometers south of Gulu Town. 300 people are receiving the Sacrament of Confirmation, while six couples are being wed. During the insurgency, this parish was forced to close. Paris. Kamukana Pati Pegubero i Paris. Kipin Moni Pol Pol Gabel can the Lorio. Chimano Tikilu Tien Mugu Dom a Pol La Bono Sacramento. Jumukati Ob Megi La Bono Matumunio. So well dong, well that him a pole pianong, ki could mo be monaki, ki putti modon pole good dark i cabel megi, don't get it on, can me a sacramento, but you upon no sacramento be mwaki mo pole ta and age. This meant that the faithful were unable to receive sacraments regularly as their religion requires of them. Now that the war is over, this is the right opportunity for them. Many returnees in many areas are taking advantage of the prevailing peace to fulfill their religious obligation following 20 years of absence of complete spiritual guidance. Nine-year-old Lamwaka Fiona lives in Latek village, Alokulum Parish, Ongako sub-county in Gulu district. She wakes up very early to do house chores before taking a quick bath and heading for school a kilometer away. On the way, she's joined by her two friends, Achora Jacqueline and Mary Oyera. The three girls are able to walk to school through the bushes without any fear. Three years ago, they would not have dared walk this path for fear of being abducted by the rebels. They are also lucky that Boba Manan Primary School, the school they all go to, has been relocated to its original site. Located in Bobo Manan, Alokulum Parish, Ongako Sub County in Gulu District, the school was displaced to Alokulum Seminary and later relocated here in 2009 following the restoration of peace in the area. Today, the school has a population of 525 pupils who come from families of returnees living in the neighboring areas. Two decades of insurgency greatly devastated social infrastructure in northern Uganda. Most community roads were abandoned. Today, as people struggle to resettle in their villages, they are faced with the daunting task of opening up and maintaining these roads. Each of these residents of Paidonga village, Palenga Parish, Bobi Sub County in Gulu district, is allocated a section of the community access road to maintain. This is a communal voluntary initiative aimed at creating accessibility to their village for the benefit of the entire community. Fort Patiko, an important historical site not only in northern Uganda but the entire Africa. 
it's one of the few significant symbols of slave trade in Uganda. Before the war in northern Uganda, Fort Patiko, otherwise known as Baker's Fort, was a well-developed popular tourist site in the region. Starting from the early 1980s, nobody dared come here. It was subsequently closed and abandoned. In 2008, local leaders took the initiative of reviving the site after the area was declared safe. Today the place has picked up once again and many tourists and historians come here to learn about the role of this fort in the struggle to end slave trade. Very freely you can even come and sleep up here, no one would even, no, not, your problem possibly would be the mosquitoes. With the aid from the, from the tourism ministry, we believe this place will even be much more exciting than otherwise. Music and drama are playing a crucial role in the ongoing resettlement process in northern Uganda. With support from USAID, a total of 12 northern Uganda-based musicians have mobilized themselves and drawn up a program to stage open space concerts with the major objective of sensitizing people on the need to go back to their land. This afternoon, the team is performing at Burongo Trading Center in Amuru District. Northern Peace Concert. District, District Beach. Gulu Town, a vibrant, sprawling urban center recovering from wounds inflicted on it by two decades of insecurity. It is one of those towns in northern Uganda that offered shelter to thousands of people displaced from their homes. With a population of over 100,000 people, Gulu is the largest town in northern Uganda. It is a major commercial center with people running brisk business. Today, after the fall of darkness, most people continue with their business until dawn. Three years ago, this was not a common sight here. Gulu has a vibrant nightlife that is unmatched by many towns in Uganda. On weekends, nightclubs open as early as 8 p.m. and people party until the break of day. Revelers from as far as Juba, Kampala, Ketgum, Mbali, Arua and many neighboring towns converge here to enjoy the peaceful hospitality and entertainment offered by Gulu Town. They have now more time to relax, to entertainment themselves and to give themselves the chance to feel the peace is here. The enthusiasm and determination shown by the people of Acholi to go back to their homes cannot be overemphasized. The number of mushrooming new settlements in the remotest parts of the region says it all. From the open savanna land of Purongo, through the remote villages of Alero, to Wall Valley in Pader, through the plains of Kitgum, 
it is clearly evident that people in Acholi land are casting the bitter past behind them with the determination to move on in a new era. An era of visionary prosperity. An era of peace and stability.